This is a small model steam engine made from castings from a company called Stuart in the UK. It's a fun little thing to put together. And if you are a machinist or a hobbyist with machine tools, it will give you many, many hours of enjoyment. I believe with the Stevenson reversing gear on this one, it took me about 50 hours to machine everything on this because they send you castings and all the raw materials and you're making most of these pieces from raw stock such as all these little shafts and uh, different pieces here are all from raw stock. One of the problems I've always had with these little steam engines is just a lack of a realistic means of attaching the flywheel to the shaft. If you look at the instructions they tell you to use a small grub screw or a set screw to fix the flywheel onto the shaft, but that doesn't look realistic and it's quite impractical. These are real steam engines and when you run them, what will happen is over a few minutes, the grub screw will simply work its way out and the flywheel will start spinning free. It's just the nature of how flywheels work. They work by energy going into the flywheel and then coming out of the flywheel as the engine goes through its uh, various strokes. And what that does is the flywheel and the shaft, it's a herky-jerky motion that will eventually shake the screw loose. And that's why you don't see real flywheels attached to shafts with a set screw. What they do use is a key. And this little steam engine has a keyed shaft. And that is one of the things that makes it practical and more realistic. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about the process of putting flywheels on small steam engines with keyed shafts. So the way that you do this properly is by putting a keyway inside your flywheel. And you can see I have this little chunk of scrap where I've put a small keyway. And I've also milled a keyway in the shaft. And here's the key. And you put it all together. And this is what you get. And it looks very realistic. And it is realistic. This is actually going to work to hold this flywheel onto this shaft. So the question is, how do you get well, first, you have to put a keyway in the shaft, and that's pretty simple to do. Machinists will use a milling cutter to do that. You can use an end mill. So I have a little tiny wood roof cutter here. This is carbide. I found this on eBay. And it's 3 30 seconds of an inch wide. And that's actually the cutter that I use to cut these little skinny keyways on shafts. And I'll show you how that was done in a minute. But the question is, how do you get that little keyway here inside the flywheel? And most machinists know exactly how that's done, but maybe they haven't seen a small set like this. They're called brooches. And in my machine shop, we had a set of brooches that was like two foot long. Big, huge things that you would use with flywheels that would go on large motors. I never saw a set like this. Look at this tiny set of brooches. And if you've never seen brooches before, what they are... Long, they look like saw blades and there's little teeth on them. And this gets run through the center of the flywheel and these little teeth take nibbles of the metal out. And the way that you keep it centered in the flywheel as you're taking your little nibbles of metal out is with these little plugs. And there's multiple plugs for different hole diameters. And you can see that this plug fits very neatly in the center of this little piece of metal I made. And then 
this brooch will go in there and then you put it in an arbor press and you push the brooch through the part and that will again it's going to take little tiny nibbles of the metal and cut this little keyway and if you need to go a little further you can put this small l-shaped piece of metal inside the center part and it's a spacer not all of us have an arbor press i don't have one the easiest way that I found to do this is to simply use the quill of my milling machine. You could do it with a drill press as well. All you need is a flat surface on the quill and something to put the flywheel on, like a, a vise or something that allows the length of the brooch to pass through. See that? They come in multiple sizes. The teeth are the same, but the width is different for different kinds of keys. Now, the key stock I'm using is 332nds, so this is the one I'm going to end up using. I don't remember how expensive these were. I may have paid $100 or $120 for the set, but for what they do, they're definitely worth it. It makes a little steam engine look absolutely perfect. All right, let's go to the machine shop and take a look at these things in operation. In this first montage, I have a little piece of scrap that I found in my junk drawer, a piece of cast iron, and I'm going to be making a small flywheel out of this just for the demo. So on the left, we put that in the lathe, in a three-jaw chuck, and I just used a one-two-three block to kind of flatten it against the end of the chuck. And use a spotting drill to put a little divot in the center. Then in the middle part we see I'm using a drill bit to drill a hole for the quarter inch shaft. What we do is we go 1 64th inch smaller than the size of the shaft so that we can ream it out. And that's because drill bits are not really that accurate. They wander. So I'm drilling the undersized hole. And on the right side you'll see that I've used a one quarter inch reamer and reamed out the hole to the finished size. And we should be able to check this with the part and the shaft should fit smoothly in the part. Now we're going to go to the broaching operation. And the first thing we do, take the tool out of the milling machine so we don't cut ourselves on it. There's the brooch, and we have the little flywheel and the plug. As you see, the shaft fits perfect. Didn't expect anything otherwise. And we put the plug in. And so we put the brooch in, and we give it a little bit of oil. This is just whey oil, you know, heavy oil, nothing serious. Nothing special. And I give it a start and it goes in about an inch and then I hit the limit of how far my quill will go and of course the brooch is going to bump into the bottom of the vise. So just grab a one, two, three block and that whole setup plug and all will fit right in one of the holes of the one, two, three block. Set it in, drive it through. It really doesn't take much pressure. That's why I can use the quill of the milling machine without fear of damage. It only takes, I don't know, maybe 20 pounds of pressure. Because we're only cutting a tiny amount of metal with each step on that brooch. And there I flipped the one, two, three block and you can see the brooch is all the way through. We finished the job. It only took about 30 seconds to actually brooch this keyway. Now we're going to take care of the shaft, and I'm using an ER32 collet holder, a collet block, and you see I found a quarter inch collet, and we just put that collet block in the middle machine vise. 
This is really handy for cutting flats where you want to cut a flat on maybe four sides of a part. I have one that has six sides as well that you can use for making hex nuts. But we're not using that feature right now. It's just a handy way to hold this little shaft horizontal so that we can use the milling cutter on it. Tighten it up. And let's get our milling cutter in the machine. And I was a fool for leaving the cutter sitting there on the vise. That's just asking for a disaster. Have it fall and put a ding in the milling table. We'll break a tooth off of it. There's always more than one way to do it in a machine shop. And normally I would be using probably an edge finder to precisely locate everything and zero out to the DROs. But today I decided to use cigarette paper, the old school method where you, you put the paper on the part and you touch the cutter to the paper and then you zero everything out. That cigarette paper is about a thousandth of an inch thick. And so when you're in contact with it, you can pretty much zero out your cutter and you're going to be spot on. I moved the vertical axis so that the cutter's center line is on line with the center line of the part. I have to get the end of the part aligned with the cutter blade. And so this is the x-axis, left to right. And finally, I'm going to have to adjust the in and out, which is the y-axis, so that I can make sure I know how deep I'm cutting it. And there we go. We know exactly where the cutter is located with relation to the part. We can start the job. And the actual cutting of the key seat is going to take just a minute. You can calculate this using formulas that uh, you'll find in Machinery's Handbook. For a small key seat like this, I'm just going to cut it to half the depth of the key itself. And in reality, that's not the correct way to do it because if you think about it when you are cutting the key seat into the part the, the top of the the measurement of the depth is going to be a cord going across the circle that is the cross section of the part and it gets a little fancy the math but what i did is i just went half of the key size into the part and i found out later on i didn't go deep enough so what i did was i ran the brooch through the, the flywheel again with a little spacer and I took another nibble out of it and then everything fit perfectly. The right way to do this of course would be to go deeper into the shaft until you actually had half of your key under the surface of the shaft. Again that requires a little bit of math. Look in Machinery's Handbook, look at calculators online. problem I had was that neither Machinery's Handbook nor the online calculators go down to a quarter inch shaft with a 332nd inch keyway. They usually are expecting you to be making much larger parts. And that's it. We're done. It's a beautiful thing. We finished cutting the key seat. We've finished making the keyway and the flywheel. And it fits together. Now let's make the key. It's a pretty simple task of cutting it off of a piece of key stock. I bought this key stock from McMaster Car. It didn't cost that much, and I was able to get a lifetime supply for like $30. Then I take that key and deburr it carefully, carefully. And yes, I did get the other side of it as well. I just didn't show that on camera. Let's put it all together. Now that the work is done, we can see that the little baby key fits perfectly inside the key seat that we cut. And then the flywheel slides on top. 
The only thing remaining is to drill a hole in the side of the flywheel's hub and thread it and put in a grub screw that will clamp down on that little key. And it's exactly how it's done on industrial machinery. And this is how it looks on the actual steam engine. And if you want to add an extra touch of realism, drill that little tiny hole in the end with a center drill. That makes the shaft look just like a real shaft on an industrial machine, which has center holes in the ends for turning between centers on a lathe. So there you have it. This is a practical and relatively inexpensive way to attach flywheels to your little steam engines in a very functional manner that looks good. Thank you for watching.